Good evening, friends. I'm happy to be here tonight to greet you again in the name of our lovely risen Lord, who is in the glory of his resurrection and his presence tonight to bless us. So happy to be here. And I have this privilege. My son just said a few moments ago while standing in the room while we were waiting to come in, when he started singing only three, he looked down at me and I was praying. I looked up and said, Daddy, how many times has that called you to the platform? Thousands across the world in all different kinds of languages. I heard the natives of Africa with about 15 different vocabularies calling it all saying and only believe at once. And had to treat, keep them fenced off on a kind of sad tribal wars. And yet they all came together and only believed. A lot of it. A wonderful answer yet. Some glorious day, if I go before Jesus comes, and when they're cutting me down in the ground, they're going to say, only believe. If you see it in the newspaper or something like that on the radio or whatever, somebody says it, stop it for a minute and think of that song, only believe. Because I believe that someday I'll come out of there and secure it as I go in. Someone said not long ago, said to me, said, Brother Branham, I would like to talk to you about an insurance policy. My insurance is fine. I have nothing against it, but I don't carry any of this kind of insurance. And so the agent seems to think that I'm a little off about it, but maybe I am, but I was mistreated. My father was one time by an insurance company. He told us 20 years down the post pay off so much of it. Certain time when he came down, he told me worth $500 and he misread it for the dollar six cents. So, and I just never take that insurance. So then, uh, seeing how my old dad had to work for that, and then be like that, my brother and I. And I and I said, a friend of mine said, a boy, I just want to sell you some insurance. I said, oh, Wilmer, I don't want, I said, I've got insurance. Oh, he said, you have? I said, yeah, I've got insurance. And uh, he said, uh, my wife just caught me just to think of you story. And I said, uh, no, I have insurance. He said, uh, what insurance do you have, Billy? I said, blessed insurance. And so uh, he said, uh, well, that's all right, Billy, but that won't put in the graveyard. I said, it'll take me out. That's the thing I have. the 
just got a lie. I've been real weak and nervous since I've been here. But here, the Lord has been good to me. I feel better. And I'm coming out of it now. I've just been eating soft food or something because it's upset me all through. I was just poised and broke out all over my body and everything. And I just trusted him and he seen me through. And I desire your prayers that he will continue. Not that I deserve to live, but because of the gospel is what I want to live for. And when that time comes, I want to try to do everything that I can and put all my life in. And from henceforth, I thought that brethren, my secretary called me and said, Billy, it's not fair to the people. So you got a ministry, there's, there's 400 major cities in America calling you right now. I don't mind the phone. And he said, besides putting there every nation under the heaven, and here you are, flipping to the doubt and turn to this one and that one, just to make arrangements and just bypass now, nobody knows where to catch you. See? You're out in the woods or down somewhere, gone here, or something like that. So won't you settle yourself down and go on? So I prayed the Lord, and the Lord let me know if that was right. So we started right off, and I prayed that God will help me give me things, and I'm depending on you up your prayer and for me. I hear some things to be to be prayed over. And tonight, I tried to give the preaching, if I could, just for a little bit, just a little text to talk to you, to get you better acquainted with the ministry. Tomorrow morning is a Christian businessman's breakfast. And I think the uh, minister's wives and what more is invited. Anybody wants to come is invited. And I, um, many of you, brethren, perhaps are members of this fine organization uh, of the Christian businessman. They have been very kind to me. I've spoke for them everywhere. And they have been very kind. Stephen Sicarian, their president, minor organized vice president, and many of the others in common with open as the editor of the paper. And I'm always happy to get their help down because it's in the line. Myself, when I was a Baptist and some of you full gospel people, the first thing each denomination wanted to come and join their ranks. I wouldn't do that. Because if you do what little influence I have, it shows it to one denomination. I try to stand right in the breach and say, We're brethren. All churches are brethren. And I like to see a united effort for all churches for the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And now, that's my motive, is to keep that that way. And just stand in the breach. You don't join any certain denomination. Just stay in between so we can be brothers and not have any different feelings and say, well, I need the Presbyterian or he's the Baptist or Pentecostal. I'm just a brother. That's all. And uh, so your denominations are fine. They're dandy. I, I love them, everyone. But they're not what takes you to heaven. Christ is what takes you to heaven. Christ. So now, on these handkerchiefs, the greatest ministry that the Lord has given me almost is on handkerchiefs. Oh, I could spend hours just on telling about it. And we send out thousands of those of us all over the world. And I'm glad to see that you believe the Bible. Now, a lot of people, or many people rather, pour all of them in anointment. That's all right. That's fine. Whatever the Lord will bless, I'm fine. But if you watch in the scriptures, it wasn't that they all anointed them, they took them from his body. That's kind of handkerchiefs and aprons. Now, you know, I leave all of the fundamentals. I leave you very strict on what he done. You know where I think he got that at? I think when he got that out of the scripture where Elijah, when the Shunammite woman comes to him and asks, oh, he's got the baby, and Elijah told the Asher to take his staff and go lay it on the baby. For Elijah knew what he touched was left. Just a woman would just leave it the same way. So I think that's what Paul got his scripture for taking handkerchiefs and aprons from his eyes. However, these are some handkerchiefs that represent sick people. Before we go any farther, let's the Lord to bless these in their efforts. Thank you, brother. Now it's time to Father. It's a privilege tonight to have to call you Father. And it's a privilege to call you Father. To know that Father is ownership. And we, we love thee because thou dost own us, and we're not our own, for we have been bought by Christ, the price of the blood of the Lord Jesus. And in that we trust, and we thank thee for this Christian land where the doors are still open, and the gospel can be preached, and the freedom of speech and thought. And we thank you for 
for that. And now, tonight, these people have a right to bring these packages as tokens of their faith. Way out across the land, maybe some old dad in a little apartment, blind tonight. These packages are going to his dumb mother, take it to their baby that's raging with a fever. We don't know where to go, Father, but God does. Now, I pray that you'll bless them. Bless the people that pack them. And now we're calling the scriptures that one day when Israel had been cornered, they were trying to follow God. The great pillar of God had led them down to the, the river. And there they were with their leader, Moses. And they were cornered. The mountain, the sea, and Pharaoh's army coming for to the man. They were trapped. Nature trembled. Oh, what a scene. But it's at that time that God liked to come on the scene. The writer said he looked down through the pillar of fire with angry eyes at the Red Sea because it was cutting off the people from the promised land. And the sea got scared. And it moved back. And the children of God passed on to the dead of it on dry land towards the promised land. Father God, tonight as we send these packages, it's a token of our faith in the finished work of Christ the Calvary. And we thank you that we have this faith and the people have faith. And now when they lay upon the sick body and they reach their destination where they are going, we pray that you will look down through the blood of the Lord Jesus and may the disease get scared of the tender body when you see this token. And may the people be liberated and taken on to the promise that God is setting his word above all things I would that you prosper in God. Grant it, Father. For that's the purpose we stand in for. In the name of thy beloved child, the Lord Jesus, we ask it. Amen. In the reading of the blessed word of the Lord Jesus tonight, I just love to read his word. And Sunday afternoon I have a, a special message, if the Lord permits. As uh, I want to speak Sunday afternoon over the music academy on why there are people seek the Holy Spirit. See, what happens? And why don't they receive it? What kind of time do they have receiving it? And bring out the unsaved ones for Sunday afternoon. It will be a regular gospel message for Sunday afternoon. And Sunday night's the closing of the, this part of the campaign, I think, for the husband's going on. And our ministering brethren, you are here, and you, in your, if you will, I am uh, hoping someday to return. Now, Brother Hudson, the reason I'm here in this one church is because Brother Hudson is a bosom friend and I, and he's I tried for years to get me to come here, and I come not because that I'm pushing someone else off, but just for love for Brother Hudson. And I hope that someday you, my brethren, and you, the people of the churches, that your pastor may not to be here tonight or at any time, give them my love and regards, and let them know that someday I hope to return in a great union meeting where we can have this is just the introduction. And on Sunday, if, uh, if you will, brethren, and I'm giving it just a Sunday afternoon, so usually we close our service on Sunday night. And uh, so it's a church, if you go back when it's to the place that's in a big campaign. But this Sunday afternoon, if you don't have a program, bring your sinner friends and bring them out to the meeting, if you will. I'll be very glad for you to come. We'll do all we can to lead them to Christ. Now, and tomorrow morning, breakfast, all of you come because I want to introduce to the businessman a little bit of drama for the, at least towards the meeting in Christ. I want you to, or Christ in the meeting letter, uh, if you can come. Now, in the book of St. Matthew, and the 24th uh, verse of the 12th chapter, I wish to read this for a way of text. And the queen of the south shall rise up in the day of judgment with this generation, and shall condemn it. For she came from the uttermost parts of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon. And behold, a greater than Solomon is here. And 
May the Lord have his blessings to the reading of his word. Now, how many love the word? Do you love it with all your heart? All our faith is anchored in the word of God. And our faith has no other stable, anchored place but in the word of the law. And I'm so glad to thank thee. They can find a, a resting place on the, uh, the imaginary minds of man's self-made theology. It's got to have its resting place in the eternal rock of God's word. There is anchored because God said so. He said, heaven and earth will pass away, but my word shall never fail. So we can be assured that his word never fails. Now, we're going to speak about gifts tonight, and that's the reason I've come tonight, and um, for, for this purpose, that we could kind of explain and take my time, walk the clock, and take my time and explain to you what I think gifts are. Now, the first thing, the Bible says that gifts and callings are without repentance. It's something that God, by sovereign grace, puts into the church. See, God does that himself. It's a work and an act of God, and by foreknowledge, he predestinates these things to happen. Now, as I say, God is not willing that anyone should perish, but in the very beginning, God knew who would be saved and who would perish. For knowledge, they know that if he's the infant God, but he, he certainly cannot, uh, he, he's not willing that any should perish, but he knew from the beginning, he knew every fly, every queen, every person that would ever be on the earth, he knew them before the foundation of the world, because he's infant. And we know that he is omnipresent, that he's everywhere, he covers all things, he's all omnipresent, he's all wisdom, he's omnipotent, he's all power. And that's the kind of a God that we serve. It's not some pagan idol. It is a living, resurrected Lord Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit, which is the Spirit of the Lord Jesus that covers the whole earth. And He can be everywhere, knows all things. He's got all wisdom and all power. What a wonderful God. And to know that not, it's not just some makeup. It's just not somebody's theology, but He lives with us shows himself and proves himself alive. Oh, should we not be the most happy people in the world? Our hearts should be racing swiftly and traveling around over the world and seeing the different nations with their gods and their idols and so forth and all their philosophies, and they know that they're all free. There's not only one, the fathers are dead in the grave and gone. And only one that can prove that the leader lives and reigns. Now they're calling him, he's telling you you've got to choose to have joy, they have joy too. You say you can shout, you ought to see them shout. And you can say how happy you are, you'll see how happy they are. But our Jesus comes on the scene and does the same thing that he did when he was here before. So that proves that he lives. He is not dead. He's alive forevermore. And don't be afraid. He's at no matter how many atomic bombs they have, how many hydrogen bombs, how many they speak up, this and this is going to happen. Don't be scared. God's at the wheel. He knows just how to serve. He knows just how to come on. So we don't have one thing to fear, but be just a lovely little carefree child who's looking up to Father every minute and depending on him to lead us, guide us, and to take us into our destination by grace. And by loving him that way, you wouldn't do nothing to harm him, while if you do anything to harm him, or all through the night, your hot tears would run down your cheeks and reach over. Because you wouldn't hurt Father for nothing. Would you, you wouldn't hurt your little baby. You'd hate to do that. You'd hate to hurt the feelings of your wife or your husband. How much more your Lord and Savior would you, if you love him. If you love your wife, you wouldn't hurt her. If you love your children, you wouldn't want to do anything wrong to them. And how about your Heavenly Father? So you see, though I speak with tongues of men and angels, and though I have all knowledge and all wisdom, though I have faith to move mountains and have not love, I am nothing. Where there's tongues, they shall cease, and where there's prophecy, it shall vanish, and knowledge 
will vanish and poverty shall fail and all these things, but when that which is perfect is not it endure forever. Dear dying lamb, thy precious blood, thou never lose the power. So all the ransom church of God be saved to sin no more. See? Ever since thy saints I saw that free, thy going wounds to fire, redeeming love has been my theme, and thou be so I die. That's my theme is love. Law was fear. Law is negative. Works is negative. But love is positive. It's absolutely positive. You can trust anybody when they love you. Not because they fear you, but because they love you. And that's how I trust him because I know he loves you. And it's a love affair. And not a worse affair of fear and if and if and if and if. There's no if to it. God's done it and that's settled. So I love him for it. Now, gifts and calling are without repentance. God all through the ages has been represented on the earth through his prophets, through his kings, and it's always been the Spirit of God. If we had the time tonight that goes down like the Joseph, get out those nuggets and polish them up. I love, I'm a cosmologist now, I love to get the old house, not having an education that I have to go to house, because house. Or if I saw the type, if I was watching my dad and I never seen myself, and I see what my dad would look like, I'd have some idea of what I would look like. And that's what all the Old Testament was a shadow of the New Testament at the time. Now, if I see how God dealt with man there, I see how God was with man over here. I see what kind of a recompense of reward or disobedience, I know what it would be over here. So all the old things was a shadow of the new to come. And how we would love to go back in the Old Testament and dig up those old nuggets, prospect, you know, dig them out, polish them up, look at them, and every one of them will point to Calvary, the finished work. Everything of the Old Testament will point to the finished work of the Lord Jesus at Calvary. How Joseph was a perfect type of Christ, how Moses was a type of Christ, Moses the law gave us a priest. Our Joseph was the prince of God's theory. Everything gets prospered. When we get on the earth, put him in the dungeon, everything prospered. Put him in the table of faith, everything prospered. Wherever he went, he was a prince of God's theory. And when he comes again in his glory, the desert shall blossom as a rose, and we'll have more deserts and everything will prosper in the great millennium. When the prince Thrown into a ditch to be dead, taken up, and set at the right hand of the greatest commercial city in the world. No man could come to Pharaoh only through Joseph. Jesus sold the thirty pieces of silver by his brethren and was taken up, taken at the right hand of God, and no man could come to the Father except by the Son. Spirit of Christ in 
When the son of David came, some eight hundred years later, he said, On the same hill rejected of his own and went over Jerusalem and said, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, how long would I have a other you as a hen covered the city? And you would not. All the Old Testament, just the full shadow of the New Testament, the things to come. Someone was speaking out of an Africa, not long ago, and they have a very funny, it's a precious thing in America, even all baptism. They baptized three different kinds. One group of them baptized three times forward, the other baptized three times backward. And one they baptized one for the Father, one for the Son, and one for the Holy Ghost. And when they do it, they simply bring their creed into a pagan creed. There's no such thing. See? And then, when they then that upset the Jew, he says, which one of them is your God? Is God the Father, is your God, is God the Son, or is God the Holy Ghost? Anyone that knows God and knows his Bible knows those three are one. Not three gods, one God. Manifested in three persons. And otherwise, so that the one maybe who doesn't understand too well would know, it's three offices of the self same God. God the Father is in a form of life. No man could touch him. He come right down, condensing, and come into the sun. It was God the Son, the same God. My Father is in me. It's him that do it. It's God was in Christ, reconciling the world to himself. Oh, I came from God to Christ, and I go back to God. He did. It's God all along, only three offices, the Fatherhood, Sonship, the Holy Ghost, and the Faith. It's all the self same God. Jesus said that to you, know, I'm the Father, the Father in me, and I am you, and you in me. It's God on earth. Coming person to a virgin body, virgin form. To make a way for the shedding of the blood to reconcile many brethren back to Himself. God represented in human flesh. You see it? Yes. Yeah. That was God in David. That was God in Joseph. That was God in Daniel. It was God within a manger. It was God in a manger. But when he came into Christ, he became in the fullness of his being. In him was the fullness of the Godhead body. All the Spirit of God dwells in him. It's like this. Now, and as he goes out, one will trust the other. Did you speak with tongues? Or did you prophesy? If you now there's where the people get these gifts all mixed up. See? One will say, because you don't do this, you haven't got it. Or you don't do this, you haven't got it. Now you're wrong on that. God is like a great diamond. Listen, so we can really understand it. God is like a great diamond. And each diamond has a tip. Or the diamond has tip tape. The big master diamond. And lay it in the light. Great rays of light shines out from it. And those are God's messages, gifts. All of it comes back to the self, same God. The gifts of healing, the gifts of preaching, the gifts of prophesying. All the spiritual gifts of the body are just rays or reflections of the self, same God. See the big diamond? For you are given knowledge. To another wisdom, to another gift of healing, to another gift of prophecy, but all by the self pain good. The great diamond and the big rays of light that we see shoot this way and shoot that way all declare one thing. There is a God that lives in a ring. Amen. And as long as you see those things in operation, know that God still is the same yesterday, today, and forever. If I was a drop, I used to preach at the Baptist church at Middletown, Indiana, and I'd come home at night. He used to be an old nightingale. He said, I'd have him, but he would sing. I noticed all the song nights, 
He didn't sing as much as he did on a moonlight night. So I began to study of an idea, and I come to find out that he looked up towards the heavens, and he watched it, and as long as he can see a star, he sings, because he knows some words of sunny shining. Oh, my! What a lesson we can learn to that! And as long as you can see the Spirit of God operating through all these little rays of light, there's a promise to the Lord and the rain. <laughs> and I'll be able to close that up and bang the body for it when he can see one star. Because he has to watch the star to sing about. And no wonder that he brings the joy. Oh, it's a, a real something else. When I was getting bored in Indiana, I used to go to a certain place and drink with that. Oh, spring just bubbled all the time. I thought it was the happiest spring I ever seen in my life. It was constantly bubble, 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 bubble. So one day I sat down to the side of that spring and I said, I would like to speak to you, Mr. Spring. Every time that I come by here, you're so happy, jumping, bubbling, carrying on the way you do. I said, maybe it's because that the, the animals, the deer, come by and drink from you. What makes you happy? No, you can talk and say no. I said, well, maybe it's because perhaps some other animal would drink. No, that makes you wind up. Well, I said, that maybe it's because that you just bubble when I come by. And you, that's what makes you bubble because I drink from you. He would say, no, that isn't why. I said, well, what makes you bubble, Mr. Spring? If you could speak that to me, you'd say, Now, Mr. Brown, it isn't me bubbling, it's something behind me pushing me and making me bubble. So I think that's where it is with the Spirit of God, the Spirit of God. It isn't so much of a bubbling, it's something in there making it bubble. Bubbling up, the everlasting eyes, happening of the water of life. Freshly, honey, every day. From the inexhaustible fountain of life, which is Christ Jesus, who was founded in him through the baptism of the Spirit. Amen. Now, we have the Spirit, but he gives by potion. But Christ had it without nature. We had it by nature. To one is given knowledge, to another is given wisdom. There are in the church five offices. Apostles or missionaries, either one, that's the same thing, word means one sense. And apostles, prophets, teachers, evangelists, and pastors, God set them in the church. But because one would be an apostle, the prophet could say you're not in it, or the pastors and evangelists, and so forth. But they're all God that's put into the church for the perfecting of the saints. And in every local body is called spirit, nine spiritual gifts in First Corinthians 12. Nine spiritual gifts in, in the East Bible. They also offer it separately, but of the same self spirit. Now, but in Christ was the fullness. Now, if you see a man here prophesying, and another a pastor, one evangelist and another teacher. Now you think that you're not in it because it's just one of them rings off of God or or it's right back to God, that big master diamond. Don't forget that. And now if the Methodists is having a revival and they're getting so saved, and you're back, just don't say they haven't got any alive with it, or they're alive with the same as you are. See? It's all a life from God, big master diamond. The Spirit, the Holy Spirit. Working, getting soul saved and ready for the coming of the Lord. Now, now in Christ dwelt the fullness of the Godhead Father. He had all the Spirit of God in him. I and my Father are one, said Jesus. That's the reason people couldn't understand him. Sometimes he'd say something, and everybody would try and say something different. It was him speaking and the Father speaking. See? They were, and even the disciples could not understand it. And right away they said, No, now speakest thou plainly. Now we believe by this that you know all things, no man needs to teach you. Jesus said, Do you now believe? After all that time, they couldn't get the 
Why? It's sometimes it says this and say that. It was him and the Father speaking. Now, no hope. Now, God dwelling in Christ used his voice to speak by. Jesus said in his miracle, Very, very, I say unto you, the Son can do nothing in himself. For what he sees the Father do, that do the Son likewise. Is that right, St. John 5, 19? Then he did not do nothing within himself. No prophet ever did anything within himself. And so first God showed what to do. What did St. Moses made when he went out without the vision of God? And spoke down the Egyptians, thought he'd live with him with his hands because he thought he had a lot of faith and could do it because he was called to the job. No matter how much you're called to the job, God has to do the leading. So he failed with all his schooling and his military mind and his training as a great Egyptian leader. But that it failed because God had a program and we've got to work according to God's program. No matter what we do, how smart we are, we got to humble ourselves and work according to God's program. Amen. So he failed. And God had to keep him another 40 years to educate him. So what it was, he must forget himself. And it's not him, but it was God. Now, notice, many times people misunderstand. Now, I have to bring this in here to compare something. In a comparison. And I hope you don't ever think it to be a carnal comparison, because I don't mean it upon the operation or something that I do or you do, but that it might increase your faith that Jesus has raised from the dead, and he's the same yesterday, the day, and forever, and manifests himself in the same way here in his church that he did when he was here on earth. Oh, I hope you see it. Now look. In the unblock of fullness, he was the diamond himself. Notice, when God wanted to use his gift, he spoke to the Lord Jesus in the time of Mary and Martha's trouble when Lazarus was so to get sick. Now remember, Jesus being questioned said he did not do nothing till the Father told him first what to do. He said, Now, that is God's eternal word. If Jesus told something that wasn't so, then he wasn't Messiah. So that has to be all the truth. When a man said, not all this, he believed the devil could heal. Because that he could see. I said, Jesus said he could not heal. So that settled his sickness because God's sickness came and divided. So Jesus said he can heal, he can heal. That's it. You must believe God's eternal word. You don't know what things look like, you believe the word anyhow. You don't look at circumstance. What if Abraham would have looked at the circumstance? I just would have never been born. But Abraham called those things which were not as though they were. And if we are the seed of Abraham, we have the same kind of faith towards God's promise. Those things that come to us. We don't see that and ignore them. Amen. Well, that's the case that was once delivered to the saints. To believe God's word, regardless of what circumstances, that has nothing to do with it. Abraham called those things, and he said, God, I want to promise that God just fall away and fall away. Abraham got strong for all the time. He didn't prove to God, more of America. When he told me to go ahead and say, I imagine he got the pins and the bird eye and everything ready. But when the first month come along, there's nothing here. How you feeling, Sarah? No different. He said, Glory to God, we're going to have it anyhow. Yeah. That's it. That's it. Yeah. Sure. Second month passed. How you feeling, Sarah? No different. Glory. We're going to have it anyhow. First year passed. No different. Hallelujah. We'll have it anyhow. Ten years passed. Glory to God, we're going to have it anyhow. You got over all the time. You, we, we claim to be Abraham's seed, but if God's going to just like that, he, well, I guess there's nothing to it. Abraham, he came on you. Hold on to God's promise. Oh, he ain't Keep God's promise in front of you. That's it. After he was a hundred years old, he still said, we're going to have it anyhow. And he did. Good. Because it was God. 
God's promise. That's what Abraham's seed does. And if we do good in Christ, we put all Abraham's seed on our hands according to the ground. Then what kind of spirit should be in you? I'm praying, friends, as I talk to your pastor today, churches get the pastor's spirit instead of God's spirit. That's right. We don't need one another's spirit. We don't need a that. We need God's spirit. You go into the church and walk away the pastor eye. Watch the congregation act the same way. That's the reason. You know, the Bible said, I'll give you a new spirit, and then give you my spirit. And many people get that new spirit just to try to live right and do right, and never get the Holy Spirit to try to act by it. That is the way you get in trouble. Right. Right. The new spirit is a new life. That has nothing that's good, but God has to give you a new spirit so we get along with his spirit. The old spirit you have to put you on yourself. So along with God's spirit. So he gives you a new spirit, and you see, people, that's the reason, friends, and as I do this evangelist, I try to stay in the world. That you get the spirit of the world. Not based upon some man's theology, but just pay up the law. I've got to have for you in the presence of all of you at the day of judgment. You must take the spirit of God, that spirit of Abraham, the seed of Abraham, which is the Holy Spirit we being dead in Christ, take on Abraham's seed and the heirs of the Lord We have the same kind of faith that Abraham had. And call everything contrary to God's word as though it were not. God made the promise, I accept it, that's settled. That's all. No matter how I feel about this guy, anything else, God said, so that's settled. There is the children of Abraham as the heirs according to the promise. Now, notice, when Jesus is here on earth, he said, I do nothing until the Father shows him. He can look out on the law, and when the Father was showing somebody, he could tell him, your blood is you, you're touching my garment, the blood makes you stop. He could do those things. Someone would stand before him and come up to him, and he'd say, well, uh, uh, you're a good man, you're an honest man. How do you know me, Rabbi, before Philip called you when you were on the tree, I saw you praying. Same chapter, Tom Peter, came up to him and said, Why, your name is uh, Simon. He said, You're the son of, of Jonah. He said, I'm going to rename you and I'm going to call you Peter. How do you know him, where he comes from, who he was, the father had told him? He said so. Everything he did, the father showed him. How long? When God was going to use his own gift, he knew where it was at. Christ was God's gift. I'm talking to Jesus, the body, the son now. And when he wanted to use his own gift, he called him away for Lazarus. And they said, uh, they said come over and pray for Lazarus. Uh, people that had come out of the great Orthodox church to follow uh, what was so called the night, the Holy Roller. That's exactly what he was called. And all the other Christians were called heretics. That's crazy. No. See? No. So they were all called that, and they come out of the church to follow him. And he'd live with them. And then, when they said for him to come pray for the loved one that was sick to death, he refused to come. What would you do to your pastor? Uh, oh, I'll go join the message. That's what I'll do. If the message is right there, I'll go back to the Presbyterian. Uh, That's the reason. If you've got a good man of God and he's God's church, stay with him. But if he is a servant of God, get rid of him, get somebody who is. That's the only way to do it. Have faith in your pastor. That's true. And you see the miracles of God happen. If you've got faith in him, but he can only help you as you have faith in him. Now, Lazarus is dying. They said again. Jesus just moved on. Why? He knew what was going to happen. Then when the fulfilling the full of days that the Father had shown him, when he said, I didn't have until he told me. And then when he sees that a day was accomplished, he turned and said to his disciples, Our friend Lazarus, sleep it. Well, this one is taking rest of what he does well, but he talked in their language. He said, he did And for your sake, I'm glad I wasn't there. Because they would be persuading him to pray for him and do the very thing that God had told him not to do. See? Why could you work now over here? I tell him he's dead and in the grave four days and he come back and then raise him up from the dead. And Jesus had to leave and obey the Father. Now, you believe that? The Bible said he said he did nothing until the Father showed him. Here's what he's doing. This, and he's seen man. After the days of the 
Christ, he knows he is safe there. Then if he kept in, oh, Jesus, you mean to say this can go let everybody die like that? The doctor is just turning around and it's going to say he died with hemorrhages of the lungs and so forth. So if he died, oh, you're going to let this man die? And you mean you won't even pray for him? No, oh, he would pray for him. See, he said, I'm glad for your sake that I wasn't there. But I go with him. Why did he come to the grave? When he comes to the grave, he said, Father, I thank thee that I've heard thee already. Yeah. Yeah. But for these who stand by, I said, he knows what was going to happen. Him and the Father talked over, he showed him, because he said he did nothing until the Father showed him. He said, I know it just for an example, for these to stand by, I said it. Then he said, Lazarus, come forth. Yeah. And a man had been dead four days, stood on his feet and lived again. Amen. Amen. A woman said to me not long ago, some year or two ago, she said, Reverend Brandon, she said, you bragged too much on Jesus. I said, oh, no. No, no, no. She said, yes, you do. So you bragged too much on Jesus. So you tried to make him deity. I said, he was deity. He said, if I prove to you he wasn't nothing but a man by the Bible, would you believe it? I said, it's the Bible says so. Well, she said, I'll prove it. He said to St. John the Roman chapter, when he went down to the grave of Lazarus, the Bible said he was. Wow, oh, so what's that got to do with it? Well, she said he couldn't have been deity and Christ. I said, you fail to see who you are. He was both God and man. That was a man weeping. But when he stood to the side of the grave, break his little figure up. He was the only man. She had a right to agree. But when she heard now Martha didn't kind of do it there, but she showed herself there what she really made of. She ran that out to him, passed all the critics, and she ran and fell down before him. Now she didn't have to leave today. Pastor, I want to tell you something. <laughs> Why did you leave us in this kind of shape? Come on, poor brother, when I'm there for you. See, that's the reason God can't do nothing. You educated people know so much. Oh, you got it all worked out. You know why everything should be. But Martha just knows she run out and what? She fell down in front. She said, "Lord, that's what he was. Lord, Amen." I think she had read the Shulamite woman when she went out to the prophet. She knows the job was in that prophet. If she could ever get to that prophet, she'd find out while her child her child died. That's the reason she said when she got the prophet, she said, God did it for me. I don't know what she's worried about. She said, all is well with me and with thy husband and the child. The woman said, all is well. Amen. I like that. It comes to the spot. Amen. Martha said, Lord, if thou would have been here, my brother would not have died. He said, uh, my brother shall rise again. He said, yes, Lord, I know he'll raise again in the last days. He's a good boy. The Jews read in the general resurrection of the last day, especially the Pharisees. He said, I know he'll raise the last days. He said, I am the resurrection of life. He said, read the knees, though you were dead, yet shall he live. He said, I know that whatever he said, he's buried. He's rotten out there in the grave. He sinks us down. But the, I know that even now, whatever you ask God, God will give it to you. Oh, my. God has to take place even now. Even now. Though he's dead. Though he's in the grave. Though he's thinking. But I know that you're just exactly what you said you were. There's a penitent soul before the Creator. The wheels are coming together. Something's got to happen. Faith in the Lord is eaten. Even now, Lord, whatever you ask, God, God will give it to you. Maybe you're at the hospital. Maybe the doctor says you're going to die. But even now, Lord, can you speak to me? Can you the right hand of God making intercessions on your confession? The doctor said, I'm going to die. But even now, Lord, Whatever you ask God, God will give it to you. 
is coming from. A stream of hurt, a spirit put back to the woman where she's setting. Hallelujah. Just the same every time it's translated the same thing, so both physical and spiritual. She was saved from her blood issue. Thy faith has saved thee. What was it? The woman with her faith had contacted God through the Son of God and had drawn from the Son of God her desire. That was the woman using God's gift. On the platform of God solemnly. Here's the vision. Now he said there that in that instance he said that I got weak. But how much greater America was it when God used his gift? Here it is. It's like a, when we were born, we used to go to the carnival, or circus it was. And say for instance, I was a little taller than you. And there's a hole up here. We could peek through it. You couldn't see it, yet you were stronger than me. God makes us different ways. And maybe I can stand on my tiptoes and grab a hold of the top of the fence and pull up real hard. I'm answering some questions now that you're asking. Brother Bram, how is it that these things happen? How can you say that this one out here? Now, it's scripture, you know, Jesus did the same thing. It's not me, it's him. And if you didn't have the faith to reach and get it, it'll never happen. It's your faith. If you ever get anything from God, it will never come to a preacher or a priest. It will come to your individual faith in the finished works of Jesus Christ and Calvary. Because I don't hear this is touching a coat and coat or oil or something other. It's Father's faith in the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ. Certainly, Christ, it's all finished. It's your faith. God gives things that you're preaching His Word, sending preachers, He puts gifts. He's not willing that any should perish. He wants you to prosper. He wants you to be healthy. He died for that purpose. And He wants you to see it. He does everything that there is, even appearing Himself to preach it to you. And still, people sit back and say, well, it's minimal epithet. It's mind reading. It's of the devil. And the Jews said the same thing. When they see it done, they said, when a woman asked the well, he told her, Sin or sin is too soon when those folks down there that he saw Nathaniel out of the tree when he before he come over there, the Jews said he's the elsey no. Jesus said, I'll forgive you, but when the Holy Ghost is coming does that, you speak a word against that, it'll never be forgiven you. Prophesying is the Holy Ghost that comes on. He's raised from the dead and he's here in the form of the Holy Ghost. The same Jesus. The things that I do shall so you do. I'll be with you even in you, even in the world. God in you. Your faith for church. And he's got gifts and so forth in the church that contacts that. That's why the attack is in the platform sometimes. Not me. See, it's a physical part. It's the part that you do. God shows a gift that is just a, shows a, a, a place to go. Say, you go out right there and I'll go to Denver. You all read the paper, mysterious things passed on the street. I was over there. That's part of what See, nobody knew it. He just told me to go to that many places. If my followers and things know about it. You'll tell me go somewhere, stand on the street a certain time. You'll see a certain thing happen. It'll happen just exactly that way. Nobody knows where it comes from. Where, where, what about it? Nobody knows. I just go ahead and do what he tells me to do. Well, that don't bother me. But right now, the platform, just one vision will just take the life out of you. Why is it? It's you. Look at Lazarus. He wants to say, I got weak when I raised Lazarus. But when a woman touched his garment for a blood issue, he got weak when a man was raised from the dead, as if he been dead four days and never got weak. What was the matter? God uses gifts, and a person uses God's gifts. That's what does it. That's the reason he could proceed. It was just faith moving in. Just like here. Jesus is the whole, all the water in the ocean. This gift is just a spoonful out of it. But if it's ocean water, the same chemicals will be in the spoonful as in the whole ocean. Before. See what I mean? The same quality. What is it to do? To magnify some man, to some church? No, sir. It's to magnify Jesus Christ. Right. If it's given any other, then that God will make the answer for the day of judgment. Right. We can't take the gift off here without the thing. 
Just the coin. But I'm loaded. Now, where's the carnival? Maybe I was left all over here. Now, where's the carnival? And maybe none of these two things. I don't know. Maybe you're, you'd be some other couple. We're all one big bus. There's a lot of pastors sitting here. They're preachers. I can preach. I wasn't called as a preacher. They can teach. You. I'm not a teacher. See? I'm called as a teacher. What I'm making is here we're put it up for you to understand it. Here's a, a one man saying he's short, long. That's what he is. He can lift up a big stuff and walk away with it. I'm called as skinny. I couldn't do it. See? But God made him that way for his work. He made him this way for this work. Now we're trying to look behind the curtain of time. Well, perhaps I'd be the one to do it. Now, what do I do? I jump way up and grab a hole, a little short fella. He couldn't do that. I couldn't miss his rope. See what I mean? Maybe you preach. Maybe you're a pastor. Maybe you're a teacher. Maybe you're a evangelist. You don't see vision. I see vision. I'm, I'm none of that. See? But God has set in the church all these things for the perfecting of the body. Now, do you follow me? Now, I jump up all because I'm the tallest. I get a hold of it. Now, here's on the platform. I pull real hard. I look through the hole. What do you see, Brother Brad? It's a giraffe. Wow. Where's the one? Oh, giraffe, huh? Do you see anything else, Brother Brad? Well, no. Look again. I jump way up, grab a hole, pull hard. What do you see? I see a, a camel. What else do you see, Brother Branham? Oh, my. See? Now, that's what you're doing. You are fooling. You got a... Here's a person on the platform. What is it? We're standing there. I'm kneeling myself. The Father just... See, I, I'm just kneeling myself. And you are sitting out there in the audience. And you're saying, God, let him speak to me. Let him speak to me. I know there's something wrong with me. I don't know what it is. But I know where my trouble is. If he'll speak to me, I'll breathe it. I'll breathe it. You all the same. If he knows me, then I know the man don't know me. Then I'll breathe it. You. What's that doing? It? Yes. Uh, the lady sitting here, she has a thorn for She was just praying for <laughs> See what I mean? But now, that's in the meeting. But when home, there's two boys that formed an FBI outfit to come to the floor. You can see if that was right. These two boys sitting around here. That's right. Ask them what happened. Well, he's more visions at home than there is in the meeting. Well, God gives me his gift then, but now I'm spending years you use his gift. I just yield to it, and you're the one that uses it. See? I just feel myself to the Spirit. That's the reason that picture was taken. That's the reason it's hanging in Washington, D.C. In the Hall of Religion tonight. The only supernatural thing was ever scientifically proved to be taken. They've done a lot of phony things, but there's an FBI document to that of George J. Lacey. He said the light struck the lens that was there. That's all. And he's right here now. See? And now the only thing, when I know it's close, I just heal myself, and then you do, you pull. See what I mean? But now when God, say, now God's going to use his gift, I take it back to the corner. Then, here comes the ringmaster on and say, what's the matter? I said, well, I was looking over the fence. Said, well, you're a pretty tall guy, I'll just lift you up. So then when he does that, he lifts me right up with his hands like this, and then after that, he says, you see? Here's the, uh, the carnival coming this way, and it's all these circuits, and it's going to go through here and go out there, come back down. I'm not tired when it sets down. He showed me the whole thing. See? I'm not tired when he lifted me up. Then I come out of them kind of things. It don't bother me. But when you go to pulling, you're pulling from the street. See what I mean? Do you understand me now? Now, that's what the woman does. Read the he tell we, the woman pulled from God the things that she wanted from Christ. Now, quickly, we're going right to the point. Gifts and calling set in the church are to magnify and to make the people ready. Now, I'm coming to my text. I went way around it, but just about five minutes now in the text. Now, listen real closely. Now, God gave a gift in the time of Solomon. And Solomon had a gift of wisdom. He was smart. By wisdom of God, not of his own, but of God. He asked God for that, and God did that to him. And if any gift of God will be recognized to be the truth, and everybody going around was finding out what this was, and talk coming about it, and oh, stop. you read Second Chronicles 9, chapter, when you go home. And then way down in Sheba, the queen, a wonderful woman, listen close now, Everybody, perhaps, come by was telling 
her, you should go up to Palestine, the great God of heaven. Now, she was, she was a pagan. Well, the great God of heaven has blessed the man and given him a gift. And his name Solomon. You should see the power of the gift of the God of Israel. So many people telling her, you know, faith cometh by a flock. Hearing. Everybody come by, the traveler passed by, to see the what? Did, why, to get here, oh, we come to Palestine. It's great. God has given a great gift up there. It kept on to the queen and said, you know what? I believe I'll go see for myself. There is a way to do it. Don't stand up there. I don't believe it. She wore her name is tonight immortal. She's saved. For her action. What? Yeah. Toward God's gift. That's the reason Martha got her brother restored back life. Her faith and action toward God's gift. That was the way the woman got her body to heal. Her faith toward God's gift. And the queen of Sheba, she said, I made you wrong. But all this, if it is the truth while I'm here, it must be marvelous. So I'll go. Do you realize what that woman had to do? She was probably at least three months in the desert. A woman. Not with an air conditioned room, but sitting on a camel. You realize what a sacrifice? And tonight we can hear about gift and won't walk across the street. No wonder the steel raised up and said, Jim, this general. But she wanted to know. It was worth more than life to her. Now, whenever she took the riches and, and gifts to give her, if it was gold. Now, this little woman set out with all these riches, prices and talents of gold and everything, to give to the cause of God. If it was so, she didn't know it was so. She just heard. So faith comes by hearing. So she goes to the meeting to find out. Look what she had to risk. As Ambrose and Desert was full of Israelites and robbers. While they would tell her, go down and take all that gold and stuff. But if you're really seeking God, God will see that you get there. She said, I want to see for myself. So here she goes, on the little tired and night after night, day after day, the call of the desert, the moans of the camel, the complaints of the servant, the hot, whistling sun, it's the uh, direct rays of that Arabian sun down in there, and that sun and after, so just burn you up. And she riding along a queen, all the rich. She didn't care how long it took her. She wanted to see for herself. Oh, the people of, of the nation, when they hear that God has did anything, if they would just come and be sincere and see for yourself. You get it? Now, as she comes, she came to some. She didn't come just to stay one night. He was going to see the thing too. Yeah. That's what he did. Yeah. Stay with it. She was going to test it and examine it. So finally come her turn. And when she stood before Solomon, he revealed to her everything that was in her heart. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. That's just always worked right. Solomon told her the things that was in her heart, according to the book of the Bible. Told her every question that was in her heart. God was into his gift. And when the queen got ready to return, what did she say? When she gave all these gifts to Solomon, she said the things that I heard about was right and even greater than I ever heard. She said, And Jesus, because she did that, being a pagan, and come and was reconciled to God by seeing the gift of God work perfectly, become a believer in God, Jesus said, you bunch of educated, church-born hypocrites. He said, she'll raise up in the day of judgment and condemn you. Because she'd come from the uttermost parts of the known world at that day, 
make himself a saint as he was the day so now that he is not alive. For he promised the work that I do shall you also. Even more than this shall you do for I go to my father. And the world has got the Bible, read the Bible and say, you teachers produce it. We'll believe you ready. Until that, Mohammed just the same as the rest of them. Who do the rest of them? The same thing you got. Jesus lives. He's alive from the dead. And it's not some sick teachers make up. It's not some man made homemade theology. Those people say the days of miracles are past. Their argument is thinner than the broth made out of the shadow of a chicken to starve to death. They haven't got a man to stand on or a scripture to stand on. Any man that can preach anything of this sin has to recognize this as the attributes of sin. Amen. I mean that to my heart. You can't deal with sin without giving this attributes. If a serpent had it, the big animal had his paw in your side, you just don't have to cut off his paw, just knock him in the head. He'll take care of the paw. <laughs> and when Christ died for his sin, he knocked him in the head of a person. He was dead himself. And we all got dead, but we are alive. He didn't wear his eye words, and we were dead in the So he was dead, yet not even who dwelt with him, liveth and breathed in the deep, shall never die. He conquers death, hell, the grave. Paul said when he comes to the grave, Oh, death, what is our state? Oh, death, what is our victory? The great seed of God who gives us the victory to our Lord Jesus Christ. Live! The world is hungry, but the food it is weak. We got the best doctors we ever had. We got the best hospitals we ever had. We got the best drugs we ever practiced with. And we got more sickness than we ever had. Why? Wow. We got the worst clothes. It's the weakest we ever had. So we got the best churches, the best educated man we ever had. But we got the weakest churches we've ever had. We got more sin in the world ever known of. Underneath. What is sin but underneath? You have three of God condemned already. Right. There is your sin. Not smoking, drinking, that's the attributes of unbelief. But you're a sinner because you don't believe. When Jesus questioned, said, When I come to you, you say, Will I find churches? Will I find sincerity? Will I find teachers? Will I find teaching the Bible? Will I find doing this? He said, Will I find any faith? You got the power, you need faith. Position you know who you are in Christ, then you yield yourself. Hallelujah. Don't think I'm crazy. How if I am eating alone, I'm happier this way than it was the other way. Right. I'm not crazy. That's true. I just feel, I know that my Redeemer is in I know he lives. Yes. For I can see him as he moves and walks. I know he's in this building right now. I know that his presence, so whoever two or three are gathered together, I'll be in their midst. I don't believe my boy give out any, I don't believe he get out prayer cards today. I told him not to, because I was going to preach. But I feel that the Holy Spirit is supposed to at this time. I believe we'll pray for the sick anyhow. I believe we'll do it. I see him come to the back one little ass and listen to him, wait a minute. We don't need you up here as a prayer. We don't need you up here as a prayer card. You stay where you are. You believe the mission that's been preached tonight and the message that's been preached, and you'll see Jesus Christ move on the scene. Some of you prayer cards with anointing of the Holy Ghost is present. He's there to heal. He's there to give whatever's given. Right. Listen, one time when he was preaching down on Jesus went going over to on his road. After the resurrection, two people are going over on the road over to another place called Emmaus. And on the road over there, Jesus walked right out along the road and walked with them all through the day, and they didn't recognize him. Is that right? right. They didn't recognize him. He talked with them, and many of you people have went to church, and Jesus has helped you many times, but you didn't recognize him. He's helped you, he's blessed you, he's saved you from trouble, and you don't recognize him. 
Then when he got him into one room where he could gather with him and shut the door, he done something just a little different from what a man could do. When he did that thing like he did way before he was crucified, they recognized it to be the law. He run away, got out of sight. They run back to Jerusalem lighthearted and said, True, the Lord is risen. If that's the same Jesus he's here tonight, maybe he'll do something tonight like he did when he was here on earth. If you can be the woman with the blood issue or whatever you have, if you can look and yield your spirit to him without any confusion, no prayer cards, no way of getting up here. But if you can yield yourself to him and I can yield myself to him and pray the Lord Jesus, knowing that I've got to meet these people in the judgment and stand here on your word that you raised from the dead. See if he don't call you. See if he can speak just like he always spoke. If you believe, that's the only thing you can do is have faith in God. He says, if thou canst believe. Now, let's bow our heads just a moment. I'm going to ask the audience, if you will, young lady, I want to just to softly card only believe while we have a word of prayer. I want everybody real quiet. I don't know. I'm just asking you. If you've got a need now for God, be just as reverent as you can and believe. And if you'll come tonight in this meeting, after this message, you got to answer for this message. You might not have had to answer for it if you hadn't come to church tonight, but if you go to answer for it now, it's on your hands. You'll either have to wash your hands of it like Pilate did, or you'll accept it. Now, I've spoke, that's a man, but I've spoke of his word. Now, he's God. He'll confirm his word. He's being God. Now, Heavenly Father, down we go all things. That your word might be fulfilled. Here's a strange audience. I know none of them. But thou does know them. And you who could sit there by the side of the well. The woman comes to you. You talked to her a few minutes. And you told her, said, go get your husband. She said, I don't have any husband. You said, you got five. She said, sir, I perceive that you're a prophet. But we know that when the Messiah comes, the Messiah he will give you things, you'll show you things. And you said unto her, I am he. If that was the sign of Messiah then, it's the sign of Messiah today that he's the same yesterday today. We realize that all. When the strong, straight Jew comes named Nathaniel, and you told him who he was, told him where he come from, he said, Rabbi, thou art the son of God. You're the king of Israel. But the unbelievers, many of them very religious, said, that's Belgium, He's a fortune teller. And you said, if you call the Holy Ghost that, it will never be forgiven in the world of the world to come. And you said, these things that I do, so you also. You know where the feet you had the carnage? Now, you were two mules of Danny Hicks were two ways parted. Oh, God, you know this is the Father chosen. And he said, the things that I do, and in the same manner, by the same God, of course, it'll be done to the end of the world. Yet a little while in the world, the unbeliever will see me no more, yet you shall see me, for I, personal pronoun, God, he said, I'll be with you to the end of the world. I'll be in you, doing the same work, carrying on your ministry. You said, I am the vine, you are the branches. Now yield yourself and bear fruit, and I purge you that you might bear more fruit. And Father, I yield myself to thee now, under the mighty hand of the Holy Ghost, and ask that you will help me and bless me, that I might show forth thy resurrection to this people, and that we will praise thee in Christ Jesus' name we ask it. Amen. Are you any raised? I want you to be reverent. And pray. Well, I know his presence is here. Now your audience is from me. The reason I have to say this to Ray, I've got to wait for him. And when he anoints, if he thanks to you, then I just ask you if you have a desire for God in your heart. If Jesus Christ has raised from the dead and standing here in his power, and you're out there in need, like the woman was that touched his garment, can you, now you say, well, Brother Dad, I come up and touch it. No, that's touching me. 
That would be no good. But you want to trust him. How do you trust him? The Bible says that he's a high priest right now, the right hand of the Father, making intercession. He's a high priest that can be touched by the feeling of our infirmity. Is that right? If you have an infirmity, pray to him and ask and find out if God won't give you the touch and let you touch him. If you just She's in an automobile accident. 
and got hurt. Her legs and her body was hurt. She's all shook up. That's just the of the Lord. That's true, isn't it? Think of him that's true. You read your race in the day? Say, he is for our purpose. See? But it's him. He is the healer. I'm not the healer. Don't you worry, little mother. Can I see your hand up like this? Don't be scared. And you with your hand like this. Just believe. You know, God can heal your heart trouble and make you well. You do that? Do you? you had heart trouble, didn't you? Little lady with a blue dress on, got her hair combed back. And you had a nervous heart, kind of a block heart. When you lay down at night time, you stand and it smothered you. Wasn't that wrong? But that's why I raise up your hand. All right? Now you can go home and be well. Your face touches his gun. Are you believing with all of it? Somebody over in this way, believe it. Somebody over in this section. Hard to get to the balcony. But just believe. I see a little girl sitting with her head down. Sitting right here. Look up this way, honey. You're just a child. The little girl like a pink little glass on. She's weeping because what happened? That light just moved down over her just then. She was standing near her. Honey, have you got a prayer card? Nope. You don't? Don't have no prayer card? All right. Then you'd never be called up here then anyhow. Do you believe me to be God's prophet? Do you believe that Jesus has raised from the dead? That's the mother of the child sitting by her. Do you believe it, lady? Mm-hmm. Would you, sister? Or what you're here for tonight, you're praying for your eyes. That's right. That is right. Isn't that right? Sure it is. And let me tell you, if you might know me being God's prophet, you've got a difficult at home. That is, your husband is not a saved man. That's right, isn't it, lady? He didn't even want you to come. Right. I'm not reading your mind, but Jesus raised from the dead. Amen. He lives. He reigns. Lady right behind the poor lady there. You have a stomach trouble, don't you, lady? That's right. You're not from this city. You're from a all of you. You live on 80th Street, don't you? Uh, your number is 80, and you live on 1st Street. Mm-hmm. The lady next to you is your neighbor. That's right. She lives on 64, number 64, 1st Street in Albany. She has a tumor, doesn't she? I mean, this buzzer next to you. Mm-hmm. You believe? How do I know you? I don't know you. No more than Jesus knows Peter, but he knew he was. All right. Marcy, you can be healed too if you believe with all your heart. Talk to the all that know you. It's not me that knows you, it's the Heavenly Father that knows you. You believe now with all your heart? You accept your healing? Will you believe all of the buildings this time? Is that the thing he did when he was here on earth? That is him here with you. It's him. Do you believe now? Then, then believe. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, they all superstitions leave the people. The devil tries to keep them in darkness. And truly they're designed to be the seed of Abraham. And I ask that you go send away this evil or give me the spirit of power. So I wish to speak to you. You see your exposed. Your time is nearly over. No, your condemnation at that day. I stand here as God's servant. You're not saying me, but you are him. But I represent him in his death, burial, and resurrection. These people represent him. And you've got your demons all bound into these people. And you think you can hold them, but you're just a blood. You're sick of every privilege you have. You have no evil life. Jesus, you have every power you have, child, and you're nothing but.